What are you most excited about us learning in the next 20, 25 years? Oh, I have a, I have a short list of things, profound areas of scientific ignorance, in, in my field in particular, that I would just love to see solved before I die. And uh, some mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space is forcing the universe to accelerate in its expansion against the wishes of gravity. I want to know, we call it dark energy. I want to know what that is. We don't, we've measured it, we don't know what it is, we don't know what's causing it. I said this pressure that's forcing the acceleration of the universe is against the wishes right. of the collective gravity of all the stars and galaxies in the right. universe. We don't know what's causing that. Also, five-sixths, basically 85% of all the gravity we measure in the universe has a source about which we know nothing. <laughs> we call that dark matter. And it's not even black holes. We got, we, we got the black hole tally and the dark clouds tally and all of that. It's something else. We don't know what that is. We don't know what was around before the Big Bang, before the universe. That'd be kind of cool to somehow get through that moment and come out on the other side and see what, what's going on there. Negative time, if you will. Uh, also, I'd like to know how we went from organic molecules to self-replicating life, replicating life. And that's a transition that we were challenged to accomplish in a laboratory, but Earth had no trouble accomplishing this. Earth did it early and did it well, all right? And nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. And uh, also, I'd like to know if, if, we're not, if we're alone in the universe. Those are my, did I say five? That's, those yeah. are my five, my top five. The alone in the universe question. Oh, by the way, alone in the universe, could we, could, maybe there's microbes on Mars, just in our backyard. Right. Search right. there first, our backyard. Mars, uh, Jupiter's moon Europa, well outside of the Goldilocks zone where water would be uh, stable at a liquid, in a liquid state, not too close to the sun or it evaporates, not too far away, it freezes. Life as we know it requires liquid water. Jupiter's moon Europa is outside of that zone, but Jupiter is pumping energy into it, stressing the physical body hmm. of, the, of the moon. And by doing so, pumping energy into it, melting the ice that's there, and there's an ocean of liquid water that's been liquid for billions of years. I want to go ice fishing on Europa, see if anything swims up to the camera lens and licks it. Uh, the audacity of us to even claim we can define intelligence. Right, right, right. I, my, my great fear is that we've, in fact, been visited by intelligent aliens. Right. But they chose not to make contact <laughs> on the conclusion that there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. <laughs> How's that for measures of intelligence? Yeah, just imagine, here's a planet. It gets born in the birth of its star system. And it has fertile ingredients for life, organic molecules, which, by the way, are common in the universe. The, the organics are not the challenge, right. turning organic molecules into self-replicating life. That's the, that's, the, that's the prize there. So you have a planet, and now it, it achieves consciousness among one of its species, and, and there's some interval of time in its own timeline where it has what we would say intelligent life. All right, I'll put that planet aside. Now we have another planet. Let's say it matches that similar trajectory right. in the evolution of intelligent life. So here's another gap of time right. in its timeline. So you have all of these planets. Right. Fine. But now, right. the, when were these planets born? Were they born at the same time? No. They're born at all different times. So if you line them all up on a timeline, planet, planet, from Nebulon 5 <laughs> might have had its intelligent species millions of years before our intelligent species, and maybe they went extinct. And so here we are sending signals right. passing through the dark of night because they're not happening at the same time. And then you imagine a civilization that went well beyond us in intelligence. Who, who are we as the measure of anything intelligent? Right, that's right. Uh, that where they're so intelligent that they found a way to communicate that we haven't even invented yet. They could be saying, hey, we're over here. Like, look here, look here. It could be some technological thing that to them is just obvious.
the way that we think radio waves that we're sending right. out, you know. But radio waves 200 years ago, it's like, what's that? Right. What's a radio wave? What's a radio telescope? What's a radio? Right. <laughs> That's in our own intelligent species where you couldn't communicate even though we were intelligent because we didn't have the technology right. to engage us. Right. You need more than just the intelligence. You need means to actually, on purpose, send signals out in the universe. We were send, sending signals out before we were doing it on purpose.